How's it going this evening? Oh my goodness, all is well. Yay. Okay, first of all, let me say greetings to my audience out there. You already got people giving you shout outs. Hold up. Nice. Don't turn the magnificent. Peace. Okay, this is the Tommy Cole Show. Peace, everybody. This is da 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 Brother Festo. Yeah. I don't, you know, I usually tell people's government names when we start Tommy. the show. Pardon? I was trying to see if Tajay was going to get on another. Oh, that would be in dope. The same place, but I was trying to see if he was going to get on another. Uh, another link. Yeah. Yeah, he should. People got I'm questions. Here over here. You know, people are curious about y'all. We're getting ready to come down there. We're excited next week. Now, listen, audience, I was very appreciative that I actually got to meet these brothers when I went up to yeah, I Oakland. I was doing a show with my husband, Volume 10. Shout out, Volume 10. Shout Abstract out, Volume 10. Uh, Micah 9. Neb Love. Shout out, Micah 9. Abstract Rude. Neb Love. We were doing a show right out of side of Oakland. Shout out, Dashiell. And y'all were performing. And really I was sad. like... Y'all were performing. That was like probably like three years ago. And was it was in L- Yeah, Oakland. Yeah. Oh, oh at the B Boy Summit. Summit. Yeah. I guess. Anyways, hi. You are just the coolest cat. I've I have never officially had a conversation with you guys. And I appreciate you coming on this show. Peace, good brother. Peace. I've seen you around. We know some of the same people, uh, Tajay, but I've never like officially had a like conversation with you. So, except for in passing, peace and blessings. Hold on, let me. Use I must say, I've always heard great things about you, though, and you've always given off the most and amazingest, best energy. That's all of y'all. Yeah, one and that's a beautiful thing because you know there's a lot of propaganda disrespecting black men. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's important to highlight the best and most beautiful energy in those that we are aware of. Wouldn't you agree, audience? All right. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. We can hear you loud and clear. Oh, okay. Well, peace, good can brother. You <laughs> I'm like I'm in and out of the frame. It's like you guys are frozen in time. It's as if you, as if you still came out of 93. It's not been 30 <laughs> years. That's crazy. 30 Thank years? You. That's a huge compliment. Yeah. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Let me just start reading some stuff. People had questions. Even my Aunt Kelsey had a question for you. I was like, oh, my God, Kelsey, I can't. But I'm going to read it. She's 74. And she's like, she loves y'all. Hold up. She told me to, oh, because I have students. I don't know if y'all know I'm a teacher and all that good stuff. And I love playing music from the 90s. So they'll know real music. You know what I'm saying? And you guys stand out. All jokes aside, you guys stand out because, of course, people who know about music know that Oakland slash San Francisco is one of the most musical cities in the world, historically speaking. Mm -hmm. So it's not by chance that you guys would be so amazingly melodic when you rhyme. That's what makes you guys stand out so much to me, because just y'all jazzy flow, you know what I mean? So my Aunt Kelsey asked me to ask. What got you into rapping? You know, were were y'all into jazz or you know uh, what's your thing? Were you in the church? You know, as as kids, I think just hip hop was just all un- all encompassing. You know, graffiti, b boying, DJ, and everything. It, it was a whole the, the the movement in general, the entire the entire culture. And and rapping is, I think, the one thing that you can do uh, for free. You know, you don't you, you break dance, and even you had to carry around linoleum, or you had to actually have skills and, and practice and you, know, you can hurt yourself all that kind of stuff rapping is something you know you carry it around in your head you could use it you could take it it was portable dj and you needed equipment graffiti you needed to be able to climb walls and, and spray paint and do all these types of things and we were young very young when these things were uh really starting to come to fruition so i think that rapping just is something that we, we we gravitated to but i think we all come from families where music was a big part of um our upbringing and so you know my dad used to play guitar and harmonica, my, you know, all that kind of stuff. We went to church, of course, and all that. And then, you know, there was jazz played in the house along with a, a lot of funk and, um, you know, especially uh, the mothership and all that kind of stuff. So I think for 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 me and my mind, it was just more like this is what my generation did. We we rapped, you know, like like it, 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 it was something that we could <laughs> yeah. claim as our own and, and do on our own. 
Okay. So wait, 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 Tajay. Did you play an instrument? You said your yeah, dad. Yeah, I played saxophone. I played saxophone. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, alto. Okay. All right, yeah. Festo. Did you, you, you know, most middle school kids at, at some point or another play the instrument? Mine was trumpet. What well, did you play? I did not play an instrument other than my voice. I was, I, I, I sang in, in, in the church. What? Okay. <laughs> but that was when we went to church, and that uh, wasn't that frequently. So I, okay. I wasn't, no, nah, I'm not a, I caught on, I got the instrument bug later in life. So I, I actually started learning. And went to school for music like in my thirties, actually. So that's dope. Um, no, that's not. Now I play listen, instruments, but not. That's amazing. Listen, I just bought my son and myself a trumpet. I bought us both a trumpet last year because I said, "Son," uh, and then I'm getting my other son a guitar. And at my school, the school I teach, it's actually a rock rock and roll high school. It's like, what am I trying to say? Like you can, it's a rock band high school. I don't know how to explain that, but. You can literally sign up and learn how to be in a band. You can do vocal, keys, guitar, drum. It's really freaking dope. So I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> uh, they, they, have, um, they have some some um, oh, institutions like that out here. Yeah, instruments. My, I think it's always important to have know how to play an instrument. Yeah, that's the, that was the point. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, you're never too old was my other point because I just said I'm relearning how to play the trumpet. So I think that's really important. Um, it keeps your brain stimulated. It helps trigger certain nerve endings. You know what I'm saying? We're getting older. You need to play the guitar. Plus it keeps the frequencies of the, you know, the room, you know, y'all know. I know y'all know. The sound frequencies audience, if you ever have a negative energy or feel some type of way, if you clack two spoons or play a guitar string, you can change the, the, the vibrations. That's that's physics, y'all. You can change the frequency of the room. I do that in class. I have a bell on my desk. This is a tradition, by the way. Come on in, son. Come on in. He does this every single time. And then he doesn't come in. But anyway, he's 11. But anyway, um, <laughs> he likes to peek in on me. But yeah. Uh, so music, yeah. music is good for, for children. If you have, like they say, like sing to your children. You know, playing music, um, you know, it does it does stimulate the brain and, and do all kind of neurological things that we're not quite fully aware of. But, yeah, I think it's a good thing for children to listen to music, play music, write music, whatever it is. Now, I don't super dig into y'all personal, personal, but I must ask, uh, are any of your children like next generation MCs or musicians? Or, yeah, MCs in the house? We we have a a, a few man. Uh, my daughter, uh, her, her name is Siri. She's got records out. You know, what? she's an MC, but she sings as well. Uh, a plus a son, Adeus. Uh, man, he he sings and composes. Uh, That's awesome. Uh, Pep Pep loves daughter. Uh, Naya, she she's a, a talented singer. Um, <laughs> you know, dope. so we we uh, we I think when you raise your kids. And they in the studio all the time, late nights, and you know, yeah. traveling with you and seeing you do what do what you do. It, they get it's, bit by the bug. Now, I, I would, of course, we was talking about this earlier. Not, not, not suggest a musician lifestyle to any uh, oh, right. young person. <laughs> Man, <laughs> but, but, right? but, um, but uh, yeah, we do, we do have uh, some some youngsters in our in our crew. I mean, that our, our kids. So sort of next generation. In fact, we're thinking about maybe even putting out a compilation or something like that because. They do have some good music, and it's not the style that we make. It's a whole different style. So I, I think that that's important. To, I think uh, that would be you know, show a, the continu continuity. Yes, that would be a very great contribution to the musical landscape. I think having the next generation of souls and missive children, heck yeah. And so y'all grew them up as community. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and they. I mean, my daughter is overseas right now. She just had a show down in Panama, and um. You know, uh, A plus is mixing his son's album right now, so it it's coming. Ah, that's it's coming. You know, I just had that wonderful conversation with Razkaz about a maybe a week or so ago, because you know his sons are coast country. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. No, they're they're super talented. You know, there was a lot of MCing going on in that household. I see. <laughs> yes, I was so impressed. I am so impressed with them. So I'm happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear that. And uh, okay, so I see that y'all never stopped, never stopped doing music. 
Are you so you're independent, no. period? Yeah. That's incredible. Yes. yes. That's really incredible. Did so you guys, of course, you did have a major deal back in the 90s, right? Yes. We were so how are you? How you giant. always hear these crazy conspiracy theories on YouTube. How did y'all get out of y'all's or was it just a time thing? Um, how did you get off the plantation? How do we get out of the <laughs> funny way to put it? But yeah, I mean, we, um, you know, we didn't see the eye to eye with the label. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty much the same story with different characters, right? Like, isn't that sad? We didn't see that we, our second album, you know, we fell out of favor. Uh, we didn't really, we didn't see eye to eye necessarily on the first one, but, but we made it work. And, uh, by the time the second one came around, it just, the relationship had resolved. I mean, it had dissolved and it was time for us to go our separate way. But it ended up it ended up being a blessing because um, you know from what we learned not to do, you know, being with on a major label, we learned how to do it the right way with a, with a, with an independent label. So, um, so one door closes, another door opens, and we, and at that time the internet happened to be this new thing that was, you know, coming about, and so um, it just the timing of everything just like was perfect for us. Yes. I want to say again, shout out to my audience. We're getting some audience more now. Uh, we seem to have a very large audience popping off in Germany, in uh, Egypt, Canada, India, Russia, um, definitely in the U.S. So I like to give them a shout out. Have y'all y'all been to those places? Yeah. Most of them. Yeah. I mean, I think... Uh... <laughs> I think he might be you been to Egypt. We haven't the group the group hasn't been, but yeah. Or India, yeah. That's like 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 everywhere else we've been and I think might be going on this tour. Yes. That of, was my next on question. This tour, so hopefully we end up in those spots and hopefully hopefully they get to see us on our 30 year run. I'm so proud and excited for you. Hey, actually that that goes to my next question. So I got this this is correct. 120, correct? Some around there. I mean, they, they keep on coming in. I, we got a, a new show today that came in. Uh, so incredible. We, we got uh, about 90, what, seven booked right now, and then probably another 30. So we'll ho hopefully we'll keep it to 120, 123. So it'll be like the 93 shows and then the 30 more for the 30th anniversary. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I have several things to say about that. That's incredible. OK, now I assume because, listen, this is outstanding stuff we're doing now. This is historical, y'all. Those of y'all who don't know, this is the 50th anniversary of hip hop, period. Yeah. So the fact that the family's going out there, please support. OK, wherever you are, go to their concerts. But uh, we are a little older. You know, y'all look amazing. I look <laughs> amazing as well. But. You're going on a tour, so I'm wondering what your regimen is. Are you guys like smoothieing up? What you doing? Salads? Y'all not cheeseburgering four in the morning, are you? What y'all come on with? How do you keep your stamina up? You have a lot of people. Y'all are like groundbreaking right now. Like you, you, you representing for the OGs out here that also will want to go on tour. How you doing it? Yeah, I'd say what Yoga, yoga smoothie, salads. Uh, That's your life anyway. Heavy. Um. Not really drinking and smoking too much. You know, it's already the clubs is already smoky and all that, but really just kind of refraining and, and calming down from how we probably operated, you know, uh, even 10 years ago. So, yeah, eat, eating right, getting the proper rest uh, and, and stre stretching, stretching, ear protection. You know, ear protection is important. You know, you don't want to be out there I mean, not getting the audible because you can't hear, you know. That's a good point. I hadn't thought of that one. You know, wait, wait, I got to say, Jump rope. Your, wait, wait, Festo. Tajay, that's your lifestyle anyways, isn't it? You're pretty much healthy guy anyways. Very impressive. I remember watching interviews of you guys, and I always and the one brother with the dreadlock, I forget his name. That is so terrible. Don't tell him I forgot his name, Lord. I don't even want to, uh, I'm not going to embarrass myself. But yeah, I always learned that about you guys. That's why you look so good, Festo. Look at that. Not man wrinkle. Not man. <laughs> Look at that. Not man wrinkle. I don't know. Not man. <laughs> he, he been looking I've, had my, I've had my fair share of things that shouldn't be put in the human body, but uh, <laughs> I mean it is San Francisco slash Oakland. I huh? mean, you know, we, we've tried, you know, but right I now know. it's it's all about water, sleep, <laughs> jump rope, stretching and meditation. That's that's 
That's what you gotta Stop, do, bro. And then, and then, uh, yeah, eating right, eating right. Please eat right. That is, a, you know what? If you want to tour for ninety plus days, you know. Yes, and I didn't mean flat. to throw that out there like on some jinx and got cleanse and purify all matters. I'm just saying that is something that I've been like I've gained a little bit of weight, and I've been ta- I've been going to work out. I signed up my son and I to go and. um I was talking to my husband. I bought him a treadmill dog on it. Because I was like, when you want to go, you know, bust your rhymes, you can't be like, pistol grip, huh? You got to be like, you know what I'm saying? You got to get that heart pumping. So I'm saying that to all the MCs, including myself. Yeah, you got to get that heart healthy in our age, especially when we want to go traveling, which we absolutely should. Are there any particular places you're especially looking forward to? Uh, ooh, that's tough. I mean, we just, it's been like four years since we went on the tour. Mm-hmm. So it's, 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 it's like everywhere, you know, just, just everywhere. Yeah. Cause like we haven't been out. So I got um, you. So you do know, you have we, friends, like, like friends in all these different places? Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. That's most, really- most of the places where there's somebody that like, like I have friends that, I grew up with out here, but they live in Europe now, you know, and so they come out to the shows out there or, or, or friends on the East coast who I don't see family, a lot of family too, you know, Yes. both of us, we family all over too. So yeah. we'll be able to see some people who we don't get to see, you know, er, you know, every, every so often. So that's the, that's the fun part about it. All these little mini reunions that'll happen over the course of uh, this year. That is a beautiful life. I know that you stop and give thanks. Correct. Cause that's beautiful. Yeah. I would like to live that life. Well, I would like my children to be a little older, but I can't wait to just travel like that. That's that's really awesome. Um, let me see if I got some other stuff to ask. Hold up. Okay, I think y'all kind of pretty much answered. But, oh, I had a question. This is just a fan question. I ain't gonna lie. I've been curious. Where did y'all film 93 to Infinity at? It was so gorgeous. Ooh. I know it was very f- unique at the time. Listen, audience, they filmed it basically in nature. And that just wasn't happening back in 93. That was Endo Smoke, the chronic uh, year. Okay, Pistol Group Pump year. Uh, a lot of amazing music came out in 93. That was a very powerful year in hip hop, uh, especially West Coast rap, period. Um, yeah, way out, way out, way out. If you don't know, that's okay. Uh, no, we filmed at uh, Ocean Beach in San Francisco. We filmed at Hyde Street Studios in San Francisco, uh, Yosemite National Park, and also Pinnacles okay. National Monument. What? Well, that's it, huh? Really? And then just uh, East Oakland on, on on MacArthur in like in the eighties, probably what eighty? No, about seventy fifth and Mac when the dude did the little burnout. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. You remembered every. Thank yeah, you. Beach, Thank yeah. you. And can I ask this uh, uh, another another question? Um, you know that dance you do in the video like this? That's you, right? I'm talking that's about probably, that's, probably, that's, that's probably that's probably Festo D. Festo, you, know. you know that little dance right there? <laughs> you know that little move. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. That, that, oh my God. Thank, thank. Okay. So that became the dance at Chico <laughs> State and Cal State Long Beach. And this boy I dated that went to Chico State, he used to do that. He thought he was so cool doing that. (laughs) But anyways, so here I am talking to the man who actually was doing that. (laughs) Okay. All right. So I'm fanning out. And you would too. But anyways, let me get another question popping. Okay. Okay. I got to ask y'all this. This might be silly to y'all, but it's just like a tradition I do on this podcast. Where your people from? Where your people from? Y'all from Oakland, so usually Louisiana, Arkansas, something like that. Louisiana, yeah, Louisiana. I got Louisiana, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. So, so my, you just both, a native both, Indian, both indigenous. Yeah, both my grandfathers ended up in Chicago and then made their way to Oakland. I'm from Chicago uh, too. Yeah, they, they they were from they were from Oklahoma. Went to went to uh, one my father's dad was from Tulsa. He left like right before the bombings, actually. Wow. Yeah, right before right before the bombings happened and went moved to Chicago, then moved to then moved to LA, then moved to the Bay. So yeah, yeah but but basically Louisiana. My mom's side is all from from a, a place called Lake Charles, Louisiana. Shout out I Lake Charles, Lake Louisiana. Charles. Oh yeah, woo-woo. I lived in Shreveport. Yeah. 
For six years. That's all. Yeah, I knew you looked indigenous. <laughs> yes. This is an Indian man right there. <laughs> up. Mm-hmm. I uh, knew it. I said, well, Opio's family, what well, his his family's from uh Virginia and Iowa. A plus is first generation America. His family's from Jamaica. Mm. And then um my family, uh my mom's dad is from Slaughter Neck, Delaware, Delaware. Her, her mom is from Japan. And then my oh. dad's parents, his mom is from Pittsburgh. And then I think it's uh, North Dakota before that. And his, his dad is from Alabama. Wow. So you're indigenous blends as well. I, you know, hey. Indig- yeah, indigenous I, West know, African. I don't, you know. Hey, I hey. mean, I was, you look straight up like the Gonsa people. I was just showing my students the other day what they're going to say. You know that, you know that language. Yeah. And you look like that family too down in South Africa, straight up. So we're told. Anyway, we, we world people. Because I was showing the students where, uh, in theory, they say where the Chinese, where everybody comes from, walking from different parts of Africa or boats and, Japanese and Chinese and how the South Africans and the Chinese look. It was a long story conversation. Anyways, back to y'all. Um, so y'all are leaving on the 26th. First show, yeah. That is next Saturday. Sunday. 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 Wow. Where's the first city? LA. 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 California. Y'all heard that? LA in the house. Okay, look, audience. Ask questions. Type in the chat. This is interactive. I see people are giving me all shouts outs and stuff. But if you have any questions, come ask the guys. Ask them. Ask them. So do you have any particular hits you guys are going to, are you just going to do, I mean, like, of course you're going to, of course you're going to do 93 till infinity, right? Yeah, of course. You're going to do that 90 plus times? Of Not course. a seven digits. I call them Bridget. You're going to. Okay, yeah, we, then, yeah, uh, we wouldn't be able to leave alive. <laughs> <laughs> and so, to be clear, everybody who's going is OPO A plus. Y'all, yeah, us. And then uh, we got on the wheels of steel. We got DJ Breakbeat Lou, what? and also the shout architect out. on the on the on the threes and the fours. Shout so, out! Shout out! Yeah, we, we we're bringing along. A, the, the six of us are we've been touring the last last three tours so wow that's pretty yeah. awesome that's awesome so there's no questions out there are you sure come on guys think of some questions this is fantastic this is historical have you guys been on uh many podcasts oh you guys had a podcast right called hyro hyro cast or something right I think I think casual does does streaming and podcasting a lot okay, I mean it'll casual. be interesting Why not casual but we, you know, it's crazy. The pandemic kind of had us all split up in different places, you know, quarantining and all that. But maybe that's something we could address when we come back to it. Yes, I think that the more the merrier. And you guys have a lot to share. OK, you guys have made it through to the other side. <laughs> Let's see. When is your uh, tour over? Uh, the last show we have booked right now is uh, September 17th. But we're going to um, probably go to Africa, Latin wow. America. Asia and uh, Oceania, so New Zealand and Australia. After that, so we got about nine, like about ninety nine now, and then we we'll probably do another twenty four. I'm trying to trying to stop it at one hundred twenty three. Hopefully, you know what, y'all are incredible. Y'all Thank are incredible. You. Do you study the sciences very often? I know I can get into that physics stuff um, and metaphysics stuff. I wanted to. Should I? I don't know if I should. I mean, well, I'm just gonna say something. Um, be curious about the world, yeah. I mean, we, okay. We so, yeah. do you know uh, y'all have traveled? Okay, God, that maternal thing pops off. Um, so, a lot of that flying stuff, you got to be careful, okay? Because, um, you know, when Jill Scott was traveling a lot, she started and uh, Serena Williams when they get the cramps and the, what's the thing? Like blood clots and stuff. Like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. medically, look that up or talk to you, ask your doctors and stuff about like how to make sure. That's what they claim. Like heavy D might have whatever, 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 whatever. I'm saying, okay, flying we're, lots. We not we only fly in a few of the spaces. Most of them we, we land and then we'll be in a sprinter most of the time. Okay. Or, or oh, word, because it's yeah. landmass. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. I had. Sorry. No, hell yeah, yeah. We're trying to stay stay healthy. We want to we want to make it through this and, and many, many more. You know, this yes. is only we want to be at hip hop's hundredth anniversary. 
You know what I'm saying? And have me open for y'all sometime with my new album. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> plug, plug. Um, let me see if anybody have any questions or let's see what else. Oh, yeah. Just for those who don't know, listen, Oakland, San Francisco is historically musical, guys. MC Hammer, Mac Mall, E40, Too Short, Sheila E, right? Yeah, and um, I know I'm missing many, many more, but those Let are me help I'm... you out. Tower of Power, Damn. The Whispers. <gasps> what? Um, Tony, Tony, Tony. Oh, yes. Uh, sure. Sly and the Family Stone, Carlos yes. Santana. Um, what? Uh, Confunction, uh, Lenny Williams. What? Um, Pointer Sisters. Yes. Golly. Ashe. Pointer Sisters. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, R.I.P. Um, golly, I'm trying to think. That's, so, that's, a, that's, that's a lot in that very considering small, you know, square miles of people. And they're mostly from Arkansas, Louisiana. And, uh, oh, the Oakland. Doobie Brothers. Are you serious? The yeah. Doobie Brothers are from Oakland? I can't wow. Again. What? Okay, somebody asked, like are y'all going to are y'all going to Ghana? <laughs> we we want to book, book us a show in Ghana. We definitely want to go to Ghana. That would be incredible. There's a lot going on in Ghana. Y'all know about that? Yeah. Yeah. It would be fresh to see you in Egypt. That, that Dubai be. trip is that, that popping? That's long overdue. Yeah, we should have should have been there. The whispers are Iroh crew. Yeah. Isn't that tripped out? The whispers? She's it's crazy. I didn't know that. Doobie Brothers trip off that. Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, right now, audience, if you didn't know, Ghana is offering dual citizenship to us over here. Um, for those who want to go check it out, go do that. They're having all kinds of festivals and concerts, and they're inviting people, especially artists from America, to go over there and show their talent. So, yeah, anybody out there who may have some contacts, reach out. Reach out. Oh, yeah, do you guys have a... What's your IG so people can do up? I'm Souls of Mischief, Festo mm -hmm. Hyro Soul, Rap Noir, uh, Hyro A Plus. Okay. And Opio Hyro S O M. Okay. Oh, I'm not gonna. I'll, I'll add and it in I, later. <laughs> then yeah. Then, then the real Hyro Crew is the is the hieroglyphics website. So you wanna, I mean, uh, okay. IG. If, if Real. You know, it was a mischief IG. It has all our names on there that you okay. can add us. Right. Okay. You guys are legends and you're really appreciated out here. You guys have um, kept your image positive and productive. And for that, I say thank you. And thank you for coming on my podcast too. And I'm not saying closing out or anything. I'm just giving you flowers because you deserve them. <laughs> have y'all been on the breakfast thank club you. or any of those things? Uh, you know, when we do New York, it's more uh, XF, XM, you know, serious uh, with Sway. So Sway in the morning. And uh, we probably do, you know, a WKCR with either DJ Eclipse or um, okay. Stretch and Bobby, though. But it's funny. I mean, we've been pretty underground our whole career, you know. So it's, it's, it's kind of like it's rare that we get a lot of burn on the mainstream shows, which is crazy because the people who are doing the shows either grew up on us or were there during that time. You know, like exactly. I remember going to the tunnel where Flex was DJing and, you know, rest in peace, Chris Lighty was, was walking us in and all that kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it would be cool to get some coverage on that, but like, that's not who has kept us alive. The underground has kept us alive. Shows like this, you know what I'm saying though? Sh shows, um, you know, Giles Peterson, it's just, just, you, the underground has kept us alive. And, and, and as a result, I think that it almost gave us more longevity because we are not an overexposed commodity. You know what I'm saying? It, it's something that you really have to be seeking to find. And th I think that's actually helped us. I, I think when we were younger, we may have had issues with it because we were getting played on mainstream radio, but then yeah. we wouldn't, we wouldn't necessarily be on the mainstream talk shows or TV shows. And all. I mean, we've done in living color and soul train and, you know, all the uh, Yo MTV raps and Video Soul and Rap City and all that kind of stuff. But then toward the later years, not even later, after the first few years of our career, I think we did not get a lot of um, mainstream burn as far as press. However, 
because we were being sought after and because we continue to make music, continue to make music. That's that's I think the most important thing. I think that we're here 30 years later talking about it. I mean, we're here celebrating 93 till infinity, the album, but this isn't like a reunion tour or a throwback tour. This is a tour where we're going to be doing music from our albums in between then. And we're going to be making music and, and, you know, continuing. I mean, fast got a new album in for red rum Two coming. I got a new album, you know, black tech coming. Like there's a lot, there's a lot that still needs to be done. And a lot of um, trails that need to be blazed right now. Well said, well said, I would say that way. I, you know, I didn't consider you guys underground, but you know, now that you mention it, I guess you said it well. You said it succinctly enough. Like, yeah, you guys were everywhere. Did, weren't you guys? You were on MTV, yeah? Yeah, okay. They did for the two-year thing. Oh, my God, Festo. Yeah, we did the, we did the, you know, we did that run, like, you know, once, maybe twice, you know. But for the majority of our career, we've been, definitely been underground. Um, we've, we've had our own label. We've been independent artists. And when you when you're independent, I think you got to be sort of categorized in the underground, whether people really know about you or not. You know what I mean? But because we've okay. been touring so much, I, I think it's a good thing that he said, like, this is not a, like a reunion tour. That's the way people will try to frame a, a group that's been around for a long time when they tour like they're back. Reunion tour, 30 year anniversary. But like, no, we've been doing this like we stopped because of the pandemic. And that, right. was, that was to keep everybody safe. Uh, right on. And, but you it's like. We've been we, we we were touring, you know, close to this amount of days, you know, before. So it's not like we're jumping okay. back and we're like, oh, don't hurt yourself. 90 days. I'm oh, definitely you know proud of people that can make a living <laughs> off their art. I've always wanted to just make a living off of my art. I've never just had the guts to just do that. That's really dope. Um, that's really dope. If I could make a teacher's salary just doing what I love, I'm good. I'm happy with that. That's really dope. Um, we forgot some fear and digital underground. No doubt. And we forgot Larry Graham and Graham Central Station. I don't know. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I Larry went, Graham. I went Shout out Larry other, Graham. Uh, on Saturday night and they were, his band was there playing. And they they when you see the musicianship level of guys who've been doing it 30, 40, 50 years, it's mind blowing, you know, and, and that and that is inspiring too, because you're saying, okay. These dudes are 30 years, you know, 20 years older than me, 25 years older than me. And they're just, you know, calmly just doing all kind of riffs and playing. So it, it gives us even more uh, uh, fuel to keep going, you know. Till, till the That's hell of inspiration right there. Watching Larry Graham. Oh, for those who don't know, Larry Graham is a legend. He played with Parliament, right? Among everybody, Prince, etc. Yeah. I know I skipped many people, but those are the two that stuck out to me. Um, Bootsy, right? No, Bootsy's not from Oakland, but Oakland was his home, correct? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's a lot of musicians like that too. They were, they're not like from here, but they moved here, and they were, you know, especially in the '60s and like with the hippie movement, and you know, the Janis Joplin's and you know, Jimi Hendrix and folks like that were all up on Hate Street, and you know, so it's like there's that you know the Grateful Dead groups like that. Well, yeah. Yeah. You know, jump into the rock side of stuff, but there's a lot of yeah, Green Day and Metallica and and Jello Biafra and and yeah, I mean it's 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 a long list. Like we'll we'll remember a lot of people after the interview is over that we should have said. Okay, for but real. That speaks to the di the musical you know diversity that's that's that we're kind of standing on the shoulders of. Quite frankly, is like they put the battery in our bag, you know. Indeed. And before we even knew who they were, really. You know, because they, they influence our parents to be who they were in a way. So, yeah, it's it's a, uh, you know, the Bay Area, California, you know, like we try to we try to carry that legacy with us everywhere we go. Thank you. I wanted to say that it doesn't get the shine and respect that it deserves. And um, that really annoys me just as a, as an artist and as a as a fan. I wouldn't even call me a fan as a, a, a hip hop head lover, whatever. I, I, I like good music and. Um, and great lyrics. I'm a poet. And 93 Till Affinity really stuck out to me and you guys in general in that era. And my dad died in 93. You know what I'm saying? I was in college in 93. I had great experiences, but that was a sad, that was a sad year for me. But it was also the year I started going to the good life. I don't know if you 
Y'all know the legacy of that. And that's where I met all those wonderful people like AC Alone and Abstract Rude and BJ and T Love and Ava DuVernay and, and uh, Ski Lo. That's why I used to roll up there with all of those people. And um, y'all, y'all's music like that. Y'all's and everybody's music who we play, they become like the DNA of our, they're like the soundtracks of our lives. They become a part of our DNA. So much honor and respect to you guys. And uh, shout what? out to Good Life. Yeah. Oh, sweetie. Duh. Sweetie, too. Have y'all met her? You would hear about it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I like her. Didn't she go to USC? They try to give her a bad rap. They haters. They just haters. She's doing her thizzle. Shout out, sweetie. She had a, a, a McDonald's meal. That's saying something. But, anyways. Uh, uh, let's not forget, let me segue also, Kamala Harris, or Kamala Harris, right? She's from Oakland, correct? Yeah, she's, she's, um... Berkeley? She's, she's, she's born in Oakland, yeah, but she, she grew up in Berkeley, yeah. Okay. But y'all across the street, like, y'all be, you know what? Just like I had some homies out from Oakland, and they came down to Long Beach State, and I went up north with them. They be real, but I'm from Vallejo. I'm, like, literally... You're across the street. Like, why y'all? They be really banging. Like, hey, I'm really from. I mean, so I'm just telling, I'm teasing. Um, they be really strict about where they're from. That's that's the funny part. But I guess it's like that in L.A. I'm from Party Yeah, it's like, it's like that. Like yeah, that. yeah. It's just. I mean, I think that's yeah. That's that's everywhere. <laughs> I mean, you know, you go to New York. Who like? I'm not. I'm from the Bronx. I'm from Queens. I'm, right, you know? right, right. Yeah, and Chinese food. food. That's a, that's another thing I remember about. I know I'm mushing San Francisco and Oakland together, but Chinese food in Chinatown, that's what's up. I, I just had to say that. I never had duck in my life until I went to Frisco. Um, also, let's see. Um, do you have any questions? Do you have any thoughts that you'd like to share? Mm. Any questions? Right. Like, Hmm, I get to be. I, I know, I know. Nobody ever asks, like, do you have any questions? But I do. Do you have any questions? Like, what do you know about the Tomoko show? What made you choose? I, okay, oh, okay, you okay. You I got a question. The underground. That's right. You already answered that kind of Tajay. You're like, we keep it, we keep the pulse with our underground. And I appreciate that. I think. All right. Well, I, you said you were a school teacher, right? Yes. So, what, what school do you teach at? I will mm -hmm. not say because I will not oh, have weirdos say. coming to my school, but I oh, teach okay, 10th okay. and 12th grade. Now, okay. I teach tenth and twelfth grade literature, and I use my rapper homie MC people to teach literature, language arts. Um, I, I was teaching children with nonverbal autism, severe nonverbal, um, and I would use music as a tool to get them to talk. Um, it was very helpful. I'm writing about that actually. I would like one of my students literally. He could talk, but he really, it was very hard for him. But you give him a mic, and he's all, sunshine, moonlight, good times, boogie. Like, he would do that, you know what I'm saying? And that would get me all, like, verklempt. But um, I use music. I use jazz. I use classical. But I definitely use rap because it's something about the words. Like, when they're hearing flow, you know, I teach literature in that way to help them memorize uh, how the flow of words go. So like when they write, they won't get overwhelmed. Like they had to write a mini script. We were, you know, kind of analyzing a raisin in the sun last week and they had to do, you know, write a little 20, 20 lines. That ain't a big deal. 20 lines of script. And they were getting all freaked out and stuff. And I was just like, think about how you regularly talk. And so I like, I don't know what I played. I play y'all, I'm sure. <laughs> or or somebody from the West that does the jazzy flows just to show them remembering like it's just like a musical instrument. It's just like singing. Don't overthink it. And then think about how you normally talk. I know I overanalyze that. I'm sorry. Sorry, audience. <laughs> Had a Virgo moment. But anyways, anyway, I don't even know what I was saying. I think I asked y'all if y'all had any questions, but you probably don't. Wait a minute. Are you farming? Do you farm? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm asking because that was so many years ago that I had learned that. I didn't know if you still were doing that. 
Yeah, yeah, I got some land in a, another in Panama where we're trying to put together like a sustainable community. Um, Are you kidding? Can we please? Do you mind if we talk about that? That's incredible. Sure. It's, uh, if you go to blissbeachpanama.com, that's kind of the website. And that's for the hotel. There's a hotel down there, about 20 rooms. We got a beach and we built a venue and a studio and a bunch of stuff. But then the, we bought the surrounding farmland. And I think we're about to try to create like an edible landscape of what we call a food forest. Just yes. just so that we can make sure that we can provide for the hotel patrons and ourselves um, and, and really uh, start etching out like these sort of sustainable communities worldwide. I mean, we're looking at Ghana. We're looking at uh, uh, a bunch of other places um, and really seeing, OK, how much land, how many people can you sustain on that land? And it doesn't have to be completely off grid because the grid does exist, but doing it so that we're not um, we're not uh, dependent upon the systems that exist necessarily because those systems as we see i mean we we were in a blackout for the last two days here that's crazy we never experienced nothing like that where the whole you know area where it was knocked out for multiple days and um things like that can happen and affect your life and your and your lifestyle in a negative way so if, if it's possible for us to then create these sort of communities where we're not living that much dependent upon the grid and dependent upon uh the powers that be to bring us our food our water our shelter all that kind of stuff I think that that that's an important step. And to me, like that's where hip hop needs to go. Like we're, and, we're a community and sort of roots based um, culture. And if our culture is completely dependent upon uh, sometimes what we call our enemies, grid and our enemies, uh, water, supplies, water, all that kind of stuff. Uh, culture can't last like that. You know, I mean, it, it, we, we all we're doing is sort of beautifying somebody else's house. So. Let's create let's create our own houses and do our own thing. I mean, Hyro has land out here. We're trying to put a couple little um, like small communities that we can do. Not communities, but like campground kind of camp areas where we can do retreats yeah. and things like that that are hip hop centric as well uh, with the Hyro Foundation and all that kind of stuff. Governor Newsom needs to talk with you. I mean, there is so much homelessness in L.A., even if they made it beautiful, like if they beautified and gave them tiny homes or there's a way to fix the problem like. I was going to do a poem at uh, one of my friends' uh, galleries, and I just saw rows and blocks and blocks of homeless people in these tents. But it's not just that they're homeless; it's the quality of the homelessness. Like you can, like you were mentioning about sustainable living, that deals with nature. So you're not necessarily living in like you know so-called five-star this and that. You're living off nature, and you're building your community. Um, that type of thinking would make the the mindset of the whole homeless community be a different thing. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? That's incredible, though. Like, I don't want to, I don't know how deep you want. I was like, how many people are there? Like, wow, that's dope. Like, uh, do you guys teach classes, like, to teach people how to be self-sustaining? I think that's the next thing we're going to try to do. But I mean, we kind of have to make it happen first. I mean, but right now it exists like it's a 21 uh, room hotel. It's open for business. Oh, okay. uh, and we want people to come and start hosting retreats, ho hosting teach ins and live ins and all these types of things. But okay, that's it's hard when, when you like, you know, we're about to be gone for three, four months out of the year. This yeah. is located in another country. We have kids and families and stuff here, you know. So, I mean, the eventual goal is probably to transition down there just so that uh you know our kids can get exposed to different lifestyles and, and languages and, and and ways of living but um until then like we we we've got to just I've, I've been just trying to build it up build it up make sure that that, that we can you know I, I built a venue i built a studio so the culture that i'm participating in is, is possible we got art walls and things like that that people can come down there and do art um but as far as the sustainability piece it's really now just, I've owned this place for maybe six years. So it's really just now starting to um, come together uh, around the land and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, we got about 30 head of cattle out there, uh, got horses and all that kind of stuff. So I'm trying to figure out ways to get people down there really to volunteer and help out building this sort of sustainable community because you throw money at it. If I throw money at it, um, it has to be done intentionally or it, it's, it's just going to be, the same old, you know, it's just going to be like an oasis elsewhere, you know, but if I, if I get the right people down there so that we can, you know, sustainability isn't just about the environment. It's about teaching and learning and being sustainable in that way, you know, uh, so that the knowledge gets passed down. So 
I don't just want to do it like pay somebody to do it and then it just be there. I want people who are interested in creating this sustainable community to be there and write down, you know, how they did it so that it can be passed on because we, we're going into a world where water is going to be as, as, as precious a commodity as, as gasoline or gold or anything like that. We're going to a world where there ain't going to be no fish. So now how do we do, how do we farm fish? How do we, how do we, you know, in, in the ocean, you know, in, in right. create these little fish farms and things like that. There's not going to be, you know, spaces that are, there's a lot of space, but a lot of that space is we've, we've destroyed the top layer of soil everywhere. So I'm working with a guy right now who, has this uh new soil that regenerates the nitrogen in the in the topsoil so that it can it, it can grow because we've stripped all that stuff too and there's so many chemicals and all that kind of stuff in it. So it's there are a lot of pieces to the sustainability thing. There's the For teaching sure. part and the passing the knowledge down. There's the actually doing the work and 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 making sure that we can live and survive. And then there's a part where it's like, okay, now how do we take all that knowledge and put it in a capsule and send it here, there or wherever. So that people can benefit from it. Cause I think what the pandemic kind of laid bare was that ain't no safety net. Right. And if we don't, if we don't have a safety net, we're gonna end up toe up at some point because we're still dependent upon our uh, you know, uh, rich, I guess, <laughs> you know, or, or the powers that be to feed us, to clothe us, to house us, to do all those things. And we gotta, we gotta move away from that if we're really gonna be free as a people, as people in general on earth, et cetera. And I think that we, we become way, way too comfortable. Um, I don't want to be political, but like we sitting in master's house and we become way comfortable inside of it. Like, like we own the house. And it's like, as soon as, as soon as, you know, the rent bill is due or you think you're, you're going to get kicked out, you know what I'm saying? Or they're going to be like, okay, you cool, but don't come in the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? I know this food ain't for you or, you know, so we yeah. gotta, we gotta figure out how to do for self while we still have the, um, the ability to of, do of so. being able to be in that house. You hit the hammer on the head, good brother. That was really well said. Was there a strategic reason you picked Panama, not Costa Rica, not Honduras, not Colombia? Well, yeah, um, Panama is closer. They're on the U.S. dollar. You can build. You can <laughs> get like I'm a permanent resident. You can get your permanent residency relatively easier, and um, uh, it just it just made more sense. Now I've been looking in Colombia. There's a lot of stuff going on there. That's interesting. Uh, I'm, I try to stay away from islands just because not, not on some superstition or fear, but just like <laughs> everything on an Island has to either be there or be brought there. Whereas every, you know, oh, yeah. by a ship or a plane, whereas, um, you know, Panama is an isthmus. So you get the Island life because there's two, two coasts so close. So you can get to the beach at any time. However, things all have to be brought there. So the canal was part of the reason too. Like, everything we have here came through the canal. So they got the stuff there too. You know, it's, it's not something where it's so remote um, that, that you need everything shipped in, right? There's, there's things coming on trucks, there's things coming on planes and there's things coming on boats. So I was hoping you'd say that. Yeah. The canal. <laughs> it would only be like, that's the whole purpose of them creating Panama was just to be able to go from one side to the other. Yeah. So, yeah. so but, South America. So. Yeah, and I mean the co the country makes good money off of that, and is and is doing a lot of infrastructure and all that. It and and I mean it's 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 if any of us were to hop off the plane in Panama, nobody's gonna come up to us and say, "Hey, Black American, let me let me figure out a way to, you know, make some money off of you." They're they're gonna come up and 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 speak to us in Spanish and assume that we're from there because Black folks was down there building the canal, you know, from the, yeah. from the Caribbean side. So it's That's not my ex people. It's, they from Panama. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's not. It's not a um. It's not a place where we're seen as outsiders or others. A lot of the places we travel to, even Brazil and certain places, they just know that you're not from there. And so, one, you know, and they mark you as like a, a potential victim a lot of times, you know. And so I like I like Panama because I felt like I was part of immediately part of the community. Wow. Wow. That was deep. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Thank you for that. Um sure. I'm going to look it up, y'all. We're going to look it up. BlissBeachPanama.com. Let's yep, do it. <laughs> Let's check it out. And uh, Brother Festo, what you been up to? Aside from music, How? what else do you do with your uh, with your days? Or are you just full-time musician? Everybody, everything I'm up to, but um, I like to wait until things you uh, know, off the drafting table and into the into the printer and, and, be, and, and kind of like slowly coming out. 
So I, like I right now, I'm working you. on some documentary. You, stuff. I'm working on documentary, a documentary. Uh, I'm, I'm working on a two documentaries right now <clears throat> for some black artists that are that's produced by. Um, the documentary is produced by a friend of mine, and he asked me to do the um, the 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 musical score for him. Amazing! So this is like this is a first for me in terms of like doing a score for a documentary. I've never done one, so um, that and then just preparing preparing for the for the tour. Congratulations, That's man! Like you know, this is a labor of love for me. So um, you know, I'm I'm. I'm a student, so that I'm always like I'm always trying to learn. I'm always trying to like foster new relationships with people who are in the music industry and in and in some some other closely related industry. So, um, yeah. But first, first and foremost is the tour, and then second, second is this documentary. So it should be it should be fun, like traveling, recording while traveling. Um, that's always fun, you know, being in the hotel room and and trying to make things happen after a show or in between sound check in the show and things. And that. Oh man, I remember. And the food, I'm a foodie. So it's always about the food for me. In yeah. I mean, places. in certain places it is. Well, yeah. Yeah. For <laughs> in sure. certain places it's like <laughs> get what you can get and then, you know, be happy that, uh, that it's not like slop, you know, it'd be happy Dang. you're not eating hospital food, you know, or something like that. Wow. So, no, no really? I mean, I mean, we love we're we're this guy is probably like the number one foodie in high <laughs> road right here. He's like, you know, actually the the, the head chef of, of 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 the tours when we go when, when the you know I'm talking about like oh. backstage. He find he makes a kitchen anywhere. Awesome, you that's know. very smart. Save you some money, and you don't know how other people's hygiene is in other countries, really and truly. You don't know. <laughs> Get the you yeah, no. <laughs> I'll make my own. Uh, thank you for this. Um, I don't want to. I don't know what else. Wait, hold up. Before I share, Souls and Mischief, my top three favorite group of all time. My son' middle name is Tajay. My baby mama thought I made that name up, but <laughs> that's funny, Quaz. That's my homeboy, uh, Quanza, Cal State Long Beach or Long Beach State, Long Beach in the house. He says he names his son after you, but his girl didn't know that he named it after a rap artist. <laughs> That's a great That's compliment. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm glad. I appreciate that. But, and you know, my family is my dad went to Poly, so my family is from from Long Beach too. They moved what? out here. My my grandpa from Alabama moved out out here, so he he drove buses for the for Long Beach for man until he passed away. You know um, what? So I grew up going to Silverado Park every summer and going to camp there and then going to summer school at Poly and all that. And, you know, what? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah so shout out Long Beach. I, I had a lot Tidbit. of good times in Long Beach. Tidbits. First, first time I got shot at in a drive by was in Long Beach. <laughs> what was that in 90? What year you know was what? that? This, the thing is, when I was going there, Jordans came out. You know, in Long Beach, uh, you know, I don't want to get into no gang politics, but Long Beach is pretty much a crip city, right? So mm -hmm. I'm running around. I'm from Oakland. I'm wearing like I'm wearing red 505s, you know, to match my Jordans. You know, it was Jordans, <laughs> like you know, there, there was red, you know, and I'm I'm trying to right. match, and it, that's not what you do out there, you know. So yeah, Long Long Beach was wild. I and, and where I stayed at, I, I I guess I was in the West Side, but like. My neighbors was was you know they had the weights on the front yard and the pit bulls and everything like it was oh, damn. it was real but I will say this Long Beach whatever they did down there between then and now Long Beach is beautiful I mean what they've yeah. done with the with the, the, the port or, and all that kind of stuff and all that is beautiful like they've really done a lot of good uh, work down there I think Oakland could take a, a a page out of that book and really improve the city if they would treat the city like it is you know like Oakland we got. Places you can ride horses. We've got an embarcadero and an ocean front and all that kind of stuff. But I just think that we don't we don't really we're so used to going to San Francisco for a lot of services and, and things like that that we don't really invest. I mean, even the residents don't necessarily invest in our city. But now we're we're seeing a renaissance with restaurants and all these different things. But yeah, Long Beach is beautiful. I, I really enjoy the time I spent down there. I'll be going to the jazz festival and go visit my family and all that all the time. It's, it's, it, I, I really like Long Beach. But they stepped it up in, in the 80s. It was it was. In the 80s, it was 
hot mess. For com. real. <laughs> <laughs> that mall down there was definitely, uh, I think once they revamped downtown, like when that train started coming through and then Pine Street and the gorgeous theaters and all those beautiful restaurants, it's very nice to walk down near the ocean. Anyways, yes. Uh, you're right about the restaurants, though. I was really impressed when I went up to Oakland recently. And wow, the cuisine is just really, I always gain a few pounds when I go up there. <laughs> it's so good. You don't have to eat meat or you can. It's like you can do all that. Yeah, Quaz. It was it was dangerous everywhere around L.A., for real. But um, anyways, uh, I, I don't want to hold y'all up too tough, man. Unless y'all have questions out there. Does anybody have questions? We appreciate just you taking the time. Yeah, thank you for having us. Sorry for the, you know, the back and forth. But, what? you know, it's are like we did it. We did it. You guys are awesome. And, and, and thank you so much. And when you're ready to promote your documentary or whatever you'd like to promote, you absolutely please keep in contact. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you guys make sure you, you stay safe and spirited up and eat good and have a ball, have a ball, man. We're all very proud of you. When I say we, I don't know. I think we're around the same age. I just think of our whole generation as just, we're just really proud of all of you guys. I'm telling you all the music that was coming out in the nineties, especially from the West for us, you guys are, part of the ones that did kind of cross over to a degree for us because we are from the LA underground and you know everybody seemed to get one hit pop off like just a one hit pop off and then they just was like no sh we, don't, we ain't gonna do nothing with them you know and I'm thankful that Coolio Coolio was my manager okay from like 94 to 98 and rest he took peace, me on Coolio. tour yeah rest in peace man I was going to actually ask you, did you guys get to ever hang out or meet him or any of that? Yeah, we, we did a few runs with Coolio. Um, I want to say at one point it was pretty consistent, right? Like two, three, four year span, something like that, where we would go, we would do like this mountain run. And I think, I believe it was like Utah or Colorado or yes, Aspen, Steamboat, Breckenridge, up, up, all up that way. Yeah. So, yeah, many, many shows with Coolio. Yeah, he was a cool cat, Peace. you know. And he told me, he taught me uh the like again, I'm I hear the terrible stories and I I'm fully aware of them. But for me with him, he was a very good manager and he did teach me a lot about the music industry. And I appreciate him um taking me on tour. He could have took anybody, but he took me. <laughs> Um, the funniest story I like to share is like, um, you know, he had that song, Mama, I'm in Love with a Gangster. I don't know if y'all remember that song, yeah. but the sister, her name is, uh, oh God, LaShawn. She's also the girl that sang Doing It and Doing It and Doing It Well. Right, right. LaShawn, yeah. But, um, you know, she got pregnant and um, LL Cool J was like, nah, you can't come on tour, <laughs> right? That's not sexy. And so she was mad about that and she sued Tommy Boy, right? So then they gray listed her and she couldn't get any work. So Coolio was about to go on tour. He wanted to do that song. So he was just like, you, learn that song. We're going on tour in two days. And I was like, what? What? <laughs> and I damn sure did. <laughs> and uh, But see, I, I consider myself a proper talker. I'm like, but I talk proper. I'm proper. Why did you? You know, she's like, the kids keep asking, where's their papa? You know, it's just, anyway, that's my story. But, um, yeah, and he took me down to Louisiana, him and King T, shout out King T, uh, Raz Kaz, Paul Stewart, uh, shout out Paul Stewart, and um, Billy Boy. We all went down to Louisiana, New Orleans. It was the Gavin. Did you ever go to the Gavin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Gavin, Gavin was in San Francisco. Yeah, the Gavin was in San Francisco. Yeah. There was a Gavin in San Francisco, but they had one in yeah. New Orleans one year in 95. And I went there then. And um, that's where I met everybody and their mama. Oh my God. That you would ever want to meet in hip hop. This is incredible. Um, but I just appreciate those type of experiences. You know what I mean? Just getting, they were very protective of me. I didn't get to do much. I was the only girl on tour. So they just get over here, girl. And let me do much. I didn't want to do much, you know. 
I, you know, I hung out with the Wu-Tang. That was kind of dope. Mm -hmm. But uh, very smart men. You know, I don't bring that other thing out in dudes anyway. I'm such a tomboy. I'm, what is your philosophical thinking about? You know, I'm that one. I'm not, hey, boy. I'm not, <laughs> never been that one. But, uh, you know, I'm just fascinated with intellect and uh, and talent. So that's what it is. Anyways, do you guys, I'm a, a shout out again. Do you guys have any questions? Any questions at all? This is Souls of Mischiefs by Gum. Okay, I want to know, where did y'all get Souls of Mischief the name? Because I oh, thought about man. that, like Souls. I was really trying to break that down. Mischief. We just sat around the table, and we were just throwing out names, and somebody said Souls, and another person said Of? And another Not really. Person said, Miss? And Don't another be playing person with said, me. Chief. And then we no, were like, cut it out. Miss Chief. Stop what? playing. Quit playing with me. No, you better quit playing. No. Quit playing. I don't, know, I don't know how we got that name. I don't, I, don't hey, I don't remember. I don't think any of us remember. Thank you. Don't we were like don't 16. Or something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you know, just throwing out questions. People who haven't seen or heard from people from a minute, just, you know, might have some questions like that. Um, That's it for me, though. I'm just, I don't want to burn this out. I'm just thankful for the time you've shared. You know, God willing, you'd be willing to share time with, with me again, you know. And vice versa, perhaps I could come on y'all's show, you know, when you come back. Because y'all going to blow up. And then y'all going to go to Dubai and make a $24 million. And then, you know, <laughs> Speaking into big. the universe. Yeah, please. I share, please. I share, I share <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. When is the next project? Okay, that's a good question. Thank you, Kwanzi. When is your the next, next Souls of Mystery project? project? We got project. solo projects coming along. I got the Infrared Rum, too, better known as Infrared Herring. Yeah, and I got Black Tech. Me and Architect are called Tajay and the Architect. Uh, so the album's called Black Tech. So we're working on a lot of solo projects. Uh, okay. But maybe you know, on on tour, we'll 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 do some stuff in the in the hotel rooms because we have a little. We don't have no downtime, but we we'll try. That's a beautiful thing. Uh, that's a good question. I actually did want to know when y'all go to do it. But you have individual projects. Maybe you will come together at some point. That'd be a very beautiful thing. I know somebody got a recording studio somewhere where y'all going to be bust out that real quick. Don't even overthink it. Just, hey, y'all, we all at one time at one place in the studio. Let's do it. Right. Let's do it real right. quick. Don't even overthink it. Whatever you say. It happens. That would be incredible. But anyways, um, please be safe out there. You got a lot of people out here cheering and rooting for you. And um, I don't Thank know. You. I don't want to burn y'all time out no Los more. Los Angeles, we'll see you in one week yep, yep. at the Lodge Room. At the uh, less than room. less than a week, uh, yeah. Sunday. Okay. Um, and then right. we'll be back on the fifteenth for uh, for um, the Rhyme Fest. Rhyme Fest. Yeah. Oh my God! Yes. There's a gang of the homies in the Rhyme Fest. I gotta go to that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having us. It's it's been a, it's been a pleasure, and um, you know, it's it's good to like you know, talk to people who you know. We've seen you for years and, and never really like had a had a full on like conversation like now. So I'm glad that we got to, we got got to speak and got to know each other a little bit. I appreciate that. Yeah, as a matter of fact, <clears throat> audience, we are Instagram friends. Thank you very much. I do know uh, souls of mystery. Thank you. Um, but I mentioned I mentioned Kamala because I do a character named Koala Harris. I do comedy. I'm a parodyist. So I've done my little spoof. If you like The Office. That's what I'm doing. It's called the Koala Harris VP, a mockumentary. So if you ever bored, you go on my page on YouTube or Instagram and y'all can see me in action playing Koala Harris. And it's quite cleverly written and well directed. Thank you. I just thought I'd flag that real quick. I want y'all to watch it though, for real. I want y'all to really, I want everyone to watch it. It's quite funny. And one last thing, can you guys make sure you click like Please click like. Um, it helps the algorithms. And also subscribe, y'all. Subscribe to Tommy Cole's show. And don't nobody ever send no money. I ain't even going to, you know, y'all think it's free or something. It is free. I, I love it. I love inter meeting all these wonderful, talented West Coast artists that don't get the shine, that they completely, you do get the shine you deserve. You're going to get even more, though. Not just from my show. Who am I? What? I'm just saying in life, period. You guys are awesome. And all divine and great things will come for you and to you. And on that note, 
You guys have a good evening. <laughs> Thank you, Tony Co. Peace. Thank you. Peace and love. I'm going to talk to my audience right quick. Bye. Later, y'all. Peace. That was a freaking amazing, y'all. OMG. All right. So, um, yeah, you know what? Please, if you don't mind, ever. It's a dollar sign in front of it. I just didn't put it on there. If you wouldn't mind, people donating a Jaguar, right? And they doing stupid stuff like saying this little funny looking girl is Aliyah's daughter, which we all know she's not. Then they're saying pay for uh, a DNA test when we already know the girl is not Aliyah's daughter. You could donate to the arts right here. This is the right here, you know, uh, working to try to bring entertainment to y'all. And, and, you know, maybe I could, you know, do this more do more interviews and stuff like that. If people would be willing to donate, I'm just saying, you know, maybe one day I'll get sponsorship. Maybe one day people will appreciate what the heck I'm doing. These are what I've been wanting to do for many years. They're called symposiums, symposiums, y'all. A symposium is just a very uh, fancy word for interview, but I'm doing a symposium specifically on West Coast artists. Well, artists, period, because Prince Poe is not from the West, although he lived in the West for quite some some time. Um, you know, just trying to find other parts of people. Like we love the artist's music. Maybe we did need to know about uh, Tajay and his um, his properties out in Panama. That's freaking incredible, right? That's called using your money and using it well. That's fantastic. Um, plus, you know, I'm really impressed with people who take the time to invest properly and, and think bigger than today or think bigger than what's on their street or bigger than whatever silly little dumb issues a lot of us get into. But um, yeah, I really appreciate them sharing that information. You know, um, and each time I've interviewed people, hopefully you guys notice and realize that, that, that we're bringing out different parts of them. You know, like if I wouldn't have mentioned that he's a farmer, we wouldn't even got all that out of him. You know what I mean? And I really think that they're not just good musicians. They're actually very good people, like with good character, like they're good character people. When I met them, uh, I met all of them basically uh, in Oakland. Their whole energy was just positive and good. They were good people. Like I couldn't, I'm not saying they were perfect, you know, um, like he was saying, you know, they've done whatever they do, uh, you know, as humans, but their energy is great. And, you know, energy doesn't lie. So um, I, I was just happy to interview them. And the people that I interview on my show, I usually have had some type of um, like connection, personal uh, meeting with them or something like that. Um, uh, even if it was brief, it, there are people that I find interesting that I think other people would find interesting. So I think I've been right on track with that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I didn't want to, you know, waste, not waste. That's definitely not a waste, but I didn't want to burn any more time if I didn't have any more legit questions to like ask and just be all in their face like, hey. <laughs> so um, I give thanks for that hour they gave me. Um, that's it for now. Uh, I, I would play the music, but, you know, I'm monetized now and uh, I can't do that unless I get permission from them and I have to put all rights reserved and copy. I don't feel like doing all that. So I just wanted to talk to them. Now, if I reboot this, which I probably will, I'm going to add um, music, you know, their videos and stuff like that. But for now, I'm just doing an interview and putting up my cash app for anybody who would be willing to help a teacher out. You know what I'm saying? Because this is great content. Quit playing. It really is. Like, cut it out. I'm not, I'm not, do I gotta, do I gotta burn my car up? Do I gotta, you know, um, say I'm Aaliyah's, Aaliyah's my daughter? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Do y'all boo. But um, anyways, on that note, I don't want to burn y'all out either. I want you guys to come here on Fridays though. Make sure you come on Fridays. I'm doing a, a podcast called Adult Content. And on there, I'll put the link right there in the chat, just like this, look, like this, right? And then we put it here and then bam, you guys can click that and you can actually come on the show and, um, you know, give your opinion about things. 
right? This is it, right here in the link, right? So that's on Friday nights. It's called Adult Content, and we talk about current events, you know, things that's been happening all week in the news, and um, it's been pretty pretty cool. You know, I'm really happy about the amount of people that have been participating. Juans, you should come out on Friday nights. Come on Friday nights out and get on the show and, and participate. People from all over the country tap in. It's a lot of fun. So anyways, I guess that's it. Oh, and everybody else out there, definitely check out my Koala Harris uh, web series on this channel, on Tamiko's show. They're pretty funny. You know, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I'd really like to know. Um, shout out to Algie Jenkins, Volume 10, and Cassie Hicks, who have all been a part of that. And um, other assorted, act oh, uh, Coach uh, Stuart Elsey, you know, my funny friends who are very talented actors who help do those um, episodes with me. I've also done podcasts as Koala Harris, too. So those are pretty fun. Yeah, I've noticed none of my friends, Quans, have gone to see any of my episodes. Oh my God. Like, what? That's, you hear that? That's my neighbor cussing at her kids. That's my neighbor. What? Anyways, I should yell, I'm doing a podcast live, bitch. I should do that, but I won't. Anyways. All right, y'all. I'm out of here. Uh, I, I, you know, there's quite a few people that I'm really interested in interviewing, and um, I can't wait to interview them. So we're crossing fingers on some more people that um, that I find very interesting, and hopefully you'll find them interesting too. Um, that's it. Share this thing too. This is high road for God's sakes. Souls of mischief for Christ's sake. I want to get Dell on here, man. Dell would be awesome. And um, I want to get Dr. Umar on here, Dr. Umar Johnson. I just met him a couple of nights. <laughs> Did you hear it, Kwanzaa? <laughs> I want to get uh, Dr. Umar Johnson on here, all jokes aside, like for real. I met him a couple of days, a couple of nights ago. And we'll see. We'll see. But um, on that note, audience, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm about to click out of here. I don't want to burn your time either. And um, thank you. Click like. Please click like, click like, click like, click like. And subscribe, y'all. Subscribe. And let's let this thing thrive and grow. Okay? Positive interviews from interested people. Interviewing interesting people. You know? Not just trash TV or negative crap. I am going to do an analysis of some things. I'm really not pleased about some things. But I would love to do these too, like, you know, interview people and bring out other parts of them that you wouldn't necessarily usually see. All right. So on that note, I'm going to end this now and you guys have a good night. Okay. Peace. <laughs>